What time it is? It's Woo! time for a brand new edition of the Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day. From all yeah. the automotive enthusiasts, auction sites, my name is John Polnick, along with my partner Michael Deeb. How are you, Michael Deeb? What's up? Excellent, JP. I mean, you know, just happy to be right side up, <laughs> breathing, right? Yeah, heck yeah. yeah. Uh, we, if you're new to the channel, we want to say thank you for checking out this episode and and checking out the the channel in general to see what we're about. What we do, uh, we're a couple of nerds. We spend all kinds of time, probably too much time on bring a trailer and cars and bids and P car market and all these auction sites. But what we like to do on the channel is we find the most interesting car of the day and have a conversation about that car with you on this show. Uh, and then we uh, we have some fun with it. We talk about the car and then we make a prediction as what's going to happen that car's auction and we reconcile our predictions with the real results at the end of this episode. So make sure you stick around to the end of the episode. We will fire up the time machine and go into the future, and we will show you exactly what happens. It's just like The Price is Right, but with really cool cars <laughs> instead of refrigerators and, um, you know, yeah. a can of peas or something like that. Oh, okay. So Jet skis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Last shout out real quick before we get to today's car is to God and Classic of Las Vegas. They support the show and we want to make sure that we support them. So if you're out there in the Nerd Herd, Nerd Nation, uh, and you're interested in getting a classic Porsche, check out God and Classic and see if they have something that's ready for you to go and get. You don't have to deal with all this auction stuff. Right? Yeah. Man? Tell them the bid nerd sent you. Yeah, that absolutely. That is correct. All right. What is today's most interesting car of the day? This is kind of interesting because of little bit of history with this car recently right what's up yeah well here's the thing so you know basically if you're a fan of the show if you're a subscriber or a regular watcher you know that we scour all the auction platforms to bring you the most interesting cars and, and because we pay such close attention um it's it would be pretty rare that we would miss something like this on tuesday the 21st of uh, february we covered a 2003 nissan 350z track with 12,000 original miles on the marked platform and um, that was a car that I thought was going to do really well because of the low miles and how rare the track edition is. As such, I bid $35,000 on this car thinking that Mark would find the money for it because it's not a lot of money to get a really pristine example of a pretty cool car. JP was way more pragmatic and said after he stopped laughing at my bid that it would only be $19,000 betting both against the car and against the platform. And JP, you were right on the money. Reserve not met at $18,000. You missed a Yahtzee by a thousand bucks. The car only got 17 bids, which was one of the low marks for the cars we covered that week back in February. Well, lo and behold, our car has just resurfaced. Still out there in, let me read this to you, John. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and still showing 12,000 miles. Our car is now on Bring a Trailer. And uh, again, I love this car because I think it's a an affordable, attainable, good driving Japanese reliable car that has, um, you know, sort of collector grade condition and low miles and a very specific package that they made fewer in production. It comes with some really cool things like the Brembo brakes and the 18 inch raised wheels. Um, so a really neat car for the money. Do I think this could be a future collect uh, classic, like something that that uh, you could put away and double your money on? Man, that's a tough thing to say. When we know that cars are going to go electric and autonomous before this car doubles in value, I, I don't know that this is a car you could put away. But it certainly seems like it's a, a, a lot of car for the money if you're looking at it at my price at just $35,000. That was also its original MSRP. So as this car has resurfaced, I thought it'd be really fun uh, that we caught it to just take a second look at this car and see if we can sort of put our money where our mouth is and say this car would have done better on bring a trailer so jp i send this car right back to you do you have any comments now that the car is on a different platform one i'm sort of surprised that bat is willing to take mark's old like dirty laundry and then fold it and and represent it for retail i would Part of me thinks that this is something that kind of goes against the decorum of BAT, that they don't want other people's old, dirty laundry. Maybe marked is so small they kind of don't care, but, like, would they be showing this car if it just come off a P-Car market and failed to sell, or would they be showing this car if it just come off of cars and bids and failed to sell? I actually think that Mark's sort of smaller niche audience 
means that BAT doesn't have a problem trying to retail this car literally a month later. So uh, what do you think about this? And then we'll just run through the numbers real quick. Yeah, unlike PCAR market, I, I am with you. The, <laughs> no way BAT takes uh, PCAR market sloppy seconds. But Mark has a really good reputation, so. and this car just wasn't right for that platform. These pictures are different pictures. I mean, um, they are. They, they re photographed the car, I forgot to mention. Yeah. This is, yeah, you know, that's probably why BAT said okay, is because the seller probably opted for the more expensive package, they, which is to they say, insisted on it. yeah, you know, BAT will send out a photographer and the photographer freaking nailed it. These are some of the best pictures I've seen from a BAT stock photographer. Um, with respect, uh, this guy is way better than the guy that did your photos for both of your cars. I mean, these yeah. are really good. Um, yeah. so I think this, that's going to bode very well for this car. And, you know, when we talked about it last time, you and I both really liked the car. I don't think yeah. either one of us really yeah. had a problem with it. It was just, no, you, real, teased, you realized, you, yeah. Yeah. You teased it for not being like the 300 Z and it's certainly not a Supra, but then it's never brought those kind of money. Yeah. And, uh, and they obviously mass produced the heck out of the 350 Z, but this is, I mean, if you're going to have one, this is the one you'd want, you know, low, doesn't have to be 12,000 miles, but you want one that's still first paint and still stock. And this one came with goodies from the factory. So like, this is the one you'd want. You don't have to pay a big premium for a 12,000 mile track, but if you got a, 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 you know, an original one, I think that's, that's a fair way to play. Well, I mean, look at look at the brand new 400Z, which is based on this platform. It's essentially the same car, but with a lot more power because they're turbo, right? Um, uh -huh. You know, look, those are bringing uh, in the 60s, and you're seeing dealers all over the place trying to get 70 plus for them, right? Right. I don't know it's if crazy. anyone's getting 70 for it, but I know that they're getting at least in the 50s and they're, 60s, um, they're, you know, 10, they're, 20 they're, over. They're doing that to hold gross on the original MSRP. They don't want to discount it from that, so they start at the, they start the conversation ten and fifteen grand above above that. So yeah. I, I understand the the way it works, but it's just a bummer that it works that way. Well, I mean, but that said, I think people are paying over for them, or at least they were last week. I mean, you know, yeah. you're in kind of a rocky period now where things are a little bit shakier when it comes to uh, you know just the economy in general. So. I actually think all of those things bode well for this car. It's very well presented. It's on the right platform. Um, it, it would have been really good if this car were on were on BAT in the first place. I think it would have done really well then, maybe close to what yeah. you originally bid on it. Um, but now I, you know, I'm still going to be bearish. But I think this is the kind of car that if you want a nice driving sports car with not a lot of miles that looks good and does checks a lot of boxes, but also for not a ton of money, what else are you going to get for under 30,000 bucks? Right. Uh, that's as good as this. The answer is nothing. There's nothing out yeah. there on in that price range that you can get. That's going to give you this kind of performance. And now you can yeah. say anything. You, you know, I said on the last time we talked about the car, the 350 Z's never really realized the power numbers that they claimed, but that didn't mean right. they were terrible cars. They were just a little underwhelming from what you expected. Um, right. still pretty darn fun car. And again, I haven't driven one of these track versions, so I'm pretty yeah. interested to see if it's that much better. Uh, so what's your bid? What do you think is going to happen with this car's auction? So John, I'm just going to double down and tell you that I still think that what we're looking at is a $35,000 car. That's what it costs brand new. And I think that's what somebody would pay for it to have one today in that condition, um, with such low miles and with the right equipment on it. So I'm just going to double down on my $35,000 bid and put it on this car too, and say that I think this time it, it really, I, I really believe that the car will sell for that number on bring a trailer, especially with the good photographs. I did notice that they did a really good job. Yeah. The photos are hot. They look really good. So I'll send it back to you. You were 18, uh, $19,000, $18,000 last time and you missed it by a grand. But different platform, different photos. Well, this car is going to close late in the week, and there are a lot of dominoes still standing as we make the prediction, but uh, we don't know how stable those dominoes will be by Friday uh, when this thing closes, or Thursday, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm just, I'm going to be bearish. If the, if, if the you know, what, Check out our episode with Clint Russell uh, that we did a few days ago. That yeah. was kind of a special episode about the economy and the SVB uh, bank collapse at the time that we're recording this. That just happened yesterday. Um, so 
you know, if you're watching this, you already know what's happened in the last uh, week. Uh, but when we're making this episode right now, we don't. So if the can was effectively kicked down the road for another <laughs> week or right. month or year, um, and people are like, oh, okay, well, that's fixed it. They, you know, they be- then, you know, I think, okay, this car could do pretty well. I don't think 35 though. I think at best Where you at? it's in the high twenties. I'll give it another overmarked. I'll give it $7,000 more. That's a lot more than what I bid before. So what I say like 19 last time, I'm going to give it uh, 17, 27 this time on BAT. 27. And I'm okay. Gonna, I'm going to say that I think that That's a good bid. things aren't going to be, I think that things will calm down by the end of the week, I hope. Uh, and uh, yeah. it'll be fine. Um, but yeah. yeah. That's kind of what I think is going to happen. All it's a great right, car under let's... 30. Yeah, I, I think it's a lot much better car, uh, just a little over 20, though. <laughs> 25 is would be great for this car. What do you guys think yeah. out there in internet land and in the nerd herd? Now's the time to plug in your bid. Are we being overly cautious or are we just flippant with someone else's money right now Woo-hoo. predicting these kinds? Of, I mean, who puts their money into a sports car when the world is effectively ending? What kind of idiots would do that? Clint, Big nerds would. Clint, Clint said to do that. Absolutely. What's a, what, what world, what, what car are you going to, are you going to choose for the end of the world? So That's right. I, I, I put mine into a Carrera. So you know me, I'm an idiot. Uh, well, you and I both brother. <laughs> All right. We'll find out what happens with this car's auction right after this. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend, Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Gun Porsche of Las Vegas. If you love watching car videos on YouTube, you got to check out my channel, The Rally Show. Oh, oh, oh this car. I am driving a 2020 Lamborghini SVJ. This car, watch this. Oh. 115 mile an hour turn, like, like it's nothing. Like it's butter. <laughs> Welcome to the future, everyone. Hey, look at this, guys. We got a third nerd in the future. Welcome, Andrew. How you doing, buddy? I'm great. I'm uh, excellent. How are you? Very well. Who the hell are you? Who am I? Um, my name is Andrew. Do I need to share my last name too? Probably, right? Well, I mean, whatever. <laughs> Your socials okay, really is Andrew all Andrew yeah. is my name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my Instagram is the driver 88 and my uh, BAT profile, if you want to see some cars, yeah. down, check them out, is um, A Pappas, so A-P-A-P-P-A-S, uh, 1988. Nice. All right, guys, you'll, check You'll out, find yeah. stuff I've sold and stuff I have coming soon and all that stuff, so. Kick ass. All right. Were you ready to uh, be here in the future and uh, help the nerd nation figure out how much this uh, 300Z or 350Z is worth? Oh, there we go. I, I, like, I like that car. Yeah. Oh, All I'm right. On, well, I'm on the wrong car. I, 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 I queued up the Mercedes. Let me queue up the, uh, boom, the 350Z. All right. I'm on the same page. Let's go. Here All we go. All right. So. Michael Deeb, remind uh, everyone here in the future quickly what car we're dealing with. Uh, and yeah. Uh, Andrew Thank you for along. reminding me. So we're looking at a 2003 <laughs> Nissan 350Z track coupe with a six-speed manual transmission and just 12,000 original miles out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is a car we covered a couple of weeks ago when it was on the Mark platform where it failed to sell at around $12,000. I still believed in my original bid from several weeks ago, so I went high on this car at $35,000. JP took the under at $27,000. Uh, Andrew, any experience with the track edition? This is a, a you know really nice specification with the cloth seats and the- uh, Remind the, me the, the year rate. again? A 2003 with 12,000 oh, yeah. okay. miles. It's got the Brembo brakes and the Ray's 18 inch forged wheels. A really nice example. Um, again, I said 35. JP said 27. Give us your bid before I give us the result. What do you think that car might have sold for on BAT? Just because of, like, I'm going to actually go even higher because this kind of is one of those cars that on BAT it could just go crazy because it has like, right. such low miles. And it's yeah. already old enough to be like kind of a classic, if you will. So I'm going to go. Yeah, neo classic. You said 35, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm going to go 38. 38. Okay. And I, uh-huh. I agree with you. I think that's what that car is worth. I was shocked that it sold 
for just $23,750 on only 19 bids. Um, wow. On, uh, and it did on, sell? It was not it just did bid sell, that? Yeah. It, was... it failed okay. to sell about a month ago on the marked platform that Porsche is trying to get going. And it mm-hmm. only made, JP, remember, it only made like twelve or 13000 bucks. So here we go. Uh, obviously, the uh, BAT and the seller had to take into consideration the fact that this car failed to sell just four weeks prior, and they agreed to a low reserve, and now this car sells for just 23750 bucks. I am actually shocked at that at that result. I really thought this car was worth thirty or more, and it wouldn't have surprised me if this car had brought forty or forty five thousand bucks. So it's I'm a just good buy go for sure. Say, where it is, yeah. Yeah, I think the buyer stole this car and did really mm-hmm. well. I think that's a lot of car for the money, even if it's not. You know, this is not a car that you're ever going to bring to an exotic car meet, and this isn't even a car that the Porsche guys want you hanging around with this car. But if you're new to the sort of old car platform, I think. For under twenty five grand, I don't think you could do any better than this car. I think this is a lot of car for no. the money. I think it was really well bought. Um, Andrew, have you ever driven the three fifty Z with a stick shift? Do you like this car or what? I've what driven a lot of them. Yeah, in fact, uh, in, in my days before I even knew you, back in you know <laughs> 20, yeah. 2006, six, seven, all that stuff. You know, we had a lot of these cars. So I, I worked at a normal car lot before I got into the like the you know luxury and then exotic cars throughout my career and. I've driven yeah. several of these and, you know, they're, they're a blast to drive. They have a fun little gearbox and, you know, they're fun to turn the traction control off and go slide around. Um, you know, definitely not something that I would think is like very fast, but I think if the, whoever kind of, honestly, I agree that he stole this car. Yeah. He just doesn't, doesn't put a Folgers uh, coffee can exhaust on it and a body kit and just leaves it how it is. <laughs> he could probably make some serious money. <laughs> oh my God. I think That's it's a great funny. buy though. I think honestly, and obviously it, went up to what 12 13 grand and then only did or, or doubled that basically on on bat well that's so that not entire, that's you. not entirely accurate guys um it got to eighteen thousand on mark oh, 18. oh yeah so 18, the delta 18, is okay. really right. only about five thousand bucks uh between the two platforms and you know it's interesting that you know look i i don't think this is a steal i think this is all the money because the guy tried to sell it twice you know two different audiences and i don't know if you're gonna you're not gonna do better uh, and I think that's the, that this car is a good value. They're just not worth a whole lot and they're probably not going to be worth a whole lot for a minute, uh, until, yeah. until the people, uh, that wanted this car when it was new are in their forties and fifties, this car is going to languish. Um, yeah. because it's just, you know, it was a great car when it came out and I know a lot of people wanted them, but that was only 2003, 2005. So we still have another decade to go before that demographic is in the, in the disposable cash window. For sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, in the meantime, this is kind of a car to buy and I think it's going to be a second till they're, gonna appreciate anytime soon just because i mean the economy is what it is we haven't really talked about the economy today here we're on the back half of uh you know we're in the future when we record the show it's usually a week before uh the end of of one of these auctions and who knows what's going to happen with uh, car values coming up in the next uh few weeks months and even year what what's your take on what's going on the economy andrew um well because i have such a broad spectrum of like you know old trucks, blazers, things like that. And then collectible kind of some stock, but mostly modified old Chevys and, you know, Fords, things like that. And then also I'm pretty, you know, I have tons of clients that are still, you know, that I buy and sell exotic cars or source cars for them or sell their cars and, you know, all the way up to hyper cars. In fact, I have like a Koenigsegg going live on that in the next like couple of days here. It'll be live in a couple, I think Wednesday it'll go live. And that's a Regera. So my range is so vast that like, what I saw up leading up until now with the market going nuts in 21, kind of down a little bit in 22 and then kind of leveling off now, um, it seemed like the classic car market, including Porsches, kind of did a little bit less of a fall after everything went nuts than, you know, like the newer exotic cars. I think the newer like G-Wagons, exotics and stuff did come down, but I think they're pretty leveled off now. And I think honestly that, that this banking stuff and all these fears from the consumer, you know, it's it's all going to affect the market again. I just don't know if it's going to be like a horrible downward swan dive or, you know, I still would agree that there is a strong case for putting money into, into classic cars, whatever your taste is or whatever you can find. And I think there are going to be some guys that are just wanting to sell in the next few months here. But 
I don't think it's going to be as bad as people might think it is. If you ask me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always a, you know, natural optimist, but, you know, <laughs> I, but still, you know, like, I, I, I don't, I really, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But you just never know. It's hard to predict the future, but I, I mean, I've gotten a little bit better as I go with, you know, seeing trends and seeing what works and what doesn't. And, you know, I, the hypercars didn't really get hurt too much recently when they, when the market did come down a little bit on like the supercars and stuff. Um, you know, we had, gt3 manuals selling for new ones selling for three low threes and then now they're you know there's actually some real good buys out there sometimes even in the lower twos on those so th those cars definitely went down but we all know that they're going to go back up again just like the 80s yeah. and 90s did so i think it's just trends and i really don't think it's going to be that bad but not financial advice don't don't hold me to it <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not gonna give you my address no I'm kidding. <laughs> well you already gave us your birthday so we know how to oh no yeah 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 all yeah. your, uh, yeah. All your uh, yeah. Accounts. Andrew, what's your dog's name? Uh, <laughs> your yeah, your I, first I, I, dog. Do you want me to grab her? <laughs> <laughs> he was just uh, asking for your so you can get in your um, you know, Password. social yeah. passwords. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. I do have my dog behind me here. That's that's why I got confused. But well, you good. know, let's have the dog moment. Here's Patuti, the producer of the show. So all right, get your dog, Andrew. All right, hold on. Let me put my headphones down for two seconds. <laughs> I will continue to pound the table that I disagree with you on this car as far as this. I don't think $24,000 is the accurate value, although it's hard to argue that that's all it brought on BAT. Um, I go. still think that uh, these cars have a, a little bit of a bright future, but it may take a while before we see it. So, uh, I, you know, maybe my 35 looks unrealistic since it, it failed to reach that by over $12,000. But um, yeah. I still think that car got ripped. Who's your dog, Andrew? What's this? Who's this? This is Dita, and her Instagram is uh, Dita Bear. I think just Dita Bear. I think that's it. Just, I'll, I'll confirm that. But she has an Instagram. And the Instagram is actually run by my girlfriend, not by me. So I know. I was obviously. Uh, sure. <laughs> you're, you're hoping so, right? Yeah. No, but she's a uh, she's a she's a trooper. She loves actually. She loves riding in cars, and she goes almost everywhere with me. And you know, on the days that my girlfriend is a nurse and she works, so I. I watched this one. Andrew, how many more subscribers does Dita have than you do on Instagram? <laughs> oh, it's got to be double at this point. No. <laughs> no. Um, no, she's, uh, she's a lot of fun, though. That's awesome. Very That's similar awesome. size to, to uh, uh, JP's dog, though. I don't know. She weighs 13 pounds. I'm not sure about yours. but Yeah, she's a little smaller, but uh, not much. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, right on, guys. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you guys had, uh, enjoyed this edition of Dog Nerds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that'd probably be a much better show. Um, oh, for sure. Andrew, thanks for hanging out in the future with us. Uh, thanks for having We are going to go ahead and uh, go on to the next episode. Uh, and I just wanted to say thanks to all those uh, people out there in the nerd nation who have subscribed and hit the like and notification button. If you haven't done that already, please do so now. Uh, shout out to our good friends over at God and Porsche of Las Vegas for supporting the Thank show. You. And, Thank you. Um, yeah, man. Uh, look, the comments are getting good, right, Deeb? Absolutely. Thank God for the herd, man. They are, they are fantastic. I love that they followed me over when I, uh, sold my cars on BAT just a couple weeks ago. Thanks to everybody that reached out and mentioned us, Ross and, and all the gang. Um, we love you guys. Thank you. Uh, are we allowed to talk about the uh, pit stop um, open house during Luke? Absolutely. Weekend? Yeah. If you, Listen, if anybody in the nerd herd is planning to come to the Bay Area at the end of April for Luke Cult 9, which is going to be up in Vallejo on Mare Island, just know that if you come to the Bay Area or if you happen to be here anywhere in Northern California and you're going to be around, um, the herd is welcome to contact us direct through the YouTube channel. Uh, and we will give you the coordinates to um, uh, a special open house that we're going to have on Friday night after the Professor Run Rally, which we hope you will join us on as well. But the uh, the open house will be invite only. So make sure you contact us and we'll give you the uh, time and location. And we'll invite you to join us for some cool cars, an open house of an incredible shop um, near San Francisco Airport. Um, there'll be food and music and the bid nerds themselves and maybe even Rami will make a guest appearance. We're we're working on campaigning to get Andrew Pappas to come down out of his ivory towner and join us with the air-cooled crowd. And uh, yep. maybe Andrew will show up in some turbocharged 911. It would be pretty fun if he could make it up. So we'd love to see you there. Do reach out to us if you think you'll be around, and we'll give you the, uh, give you the location. All right, guys. We will see you all tomorrow on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. That would be Bid Nerds. See you guys. Get those words!